Thing About Cars, a podcast for car enthusiasts and the people who love them. Hello, this is The Thing About Cars. Thank you for joining us for today. This is our special holiday episode for the year of 2020. Around the table, we have a full house. Amanda, are you there? I am. Dave. I am here with my Festivus poll. <laughs> Don. Present, trying to find the last minute presents. Ben. Hey, hey. There's Ben. And our special guest for the day is Mario. Mario, how are you doing? Doing well. Excellent. So I um, hope you guys can hear me okay. Yeah. You sound awesome. Hi. Great. Let's we'll start the episode with a little bit of car trivia. This being our holiday episode, we're going to do things a little bit differently today because I got to tell you, it was hard to find Christmas car oriented trivia. You know, I looked up and down for a number of mm. different search terms and couldn't find anything related to Christmas cars or Christmas automotive. Uh, if, it, if it's out there, I completely missed it. So, um, so what we're going to do is something slightly different. And I've got uh, four questions, which we'll answer here at the beginning of the show. And we, we won't even, you know, worry about the whole uh, save the answer for the end. But um, uh, so are, is that that sound cool? You guys are right with that? Yeah, it works. Sure. All right. Sounds great. So our first question is, and just rapid fire answer here. How many reindeer does Santa have? Mario, 12. <laughs> Amanda said 12. Mario said 12, 12. <laughs> well, if you can't root, root off the nine. Yeah, that, well, that's all that we know that he has employed on the sled. We don't know how many are in the back office. That's true. <laughs> yeah. That's true. And then there's that Chet in that one movie. <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah, yeah, there's Clarice. Yeah. There's Clarice, there is, yeah. and, oh, and yes. her mother, and, and her that, snooty, yeah. Yeah. It's gotta be a reserve that's team, you know, and then the, the, the mm -hmm. up and coming ones in training. And, Right. You so gotta first, have reindeer for flat reindeer days. Exactly. You gotta have reindeer to make other reindeer. <laughs> True story. <laughs> so the official so answer I, is is actually eight, but nine if you're counting Rudolph. Um, <laughs> and, and another bit of related trivia: I've heard that uh, that all the male reindeer tend to shed their well, not ten all the male reindeer period shed their antlers in the winter, so Ooh. that if you have your antlers in the winter, you are a girl. So I've all, heard that all of Santa's reindeer must have been females, which makes of perfect course. sense. Of course, yes, because right. they would ask for directions. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I've got, I've got to tell you, like I watch Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer maybe once every seven years, and I come away each time with a very very different lesson. And like first time I watched it, Rudolph's father Donner, kind of an ass. <laughs> about, seven, about seven years later i watched it and like really fixated on santa and you know santa is not a great executive he needs a managerial coach and then this year when i watched it i came away you know real a little bit of a passive aggressive twit oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, the whole story is bullying the different guy until you need him right, oh, right. i love the misfit toys i love yeah. the island of misfit toys with the lion yes. the wings i, I think that's the island of misfit toys that's my no i think that place is where you want to be because you're different mario's you know, like what have i gotten myself into here you know, just <laughs> fit in with the norm of the boring dasher dancer prancer i just dancer. don't even know if i've seen that movie Oh, it's really? classic. Wow. But which one? Because there's multiple. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I've seen it. I'm not oblivious, but. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's it's the old, I think it was recorded in the 50s, maybe the 60s. Uh, 66. 60, 60, 60, 60. It's 66. So it's, Rankin it's, Bass did the stop frame, stop frame animation stuff from yep. back in the 60s. It's a classic. It's absolutely fantastic. All right. My second question, and this one's very simple. If in the song Jingle Bells, when you're dashing through the snow, what kind of vehicle are you in? A one-horse open sleigh. That's yeah. right. It's a. <laughs> that's, that's the only vehicular-related Christmas trivia question that I found so far. Oops, I have to amend. Brent Rudolph was released in '64. Oh, '64. Okay. Sorry, that's, that's right. two years off. Yes. All right. So Saint Nick, good old Saint Nick, is the patron saint of what? Is Greece? Is, 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 <laughs> <laughs> saint Nick is he the patron saint of New York City of banking? of pirating or all of the above all of the actually pirating because he really does have a connection to greece yes, he's yes. like he's the patron saint of greece he's the patron saint of shipping 
and sailors and I don't know about those other things, but Greece definitely. Yeah. So Don's right. It is all of the above. Also to include pawnbroking, scholarship, butchery, orphans, sailors, repentant thieves, prostitutes, brewers, and haberdashery. Like and company. that's why we love him. <laughs> Man knows how to rock a hat. He <laughs> has a great chapeau. Absolutely. Well, there's so many different interests out there in the world and only so many saints to go around. So they've all got to do multiple duty. Right. They do. Yeah. You know. All right. Our last trivia question for the day. This one's kind of connected to the road trip idea. Um, which U.S. state has a town called Santa Claus? Is it oh, Indiana, that. Wyoming, Nevada, or Alaska? Uh, uh, I used to know this. I did too. I went. My first choice is Indiana. <laughs> my choice is Indiana. What do you I want to say Wyoming. Mars going to say Wyoming. Okay, Ben. Uh, I'll take Alaska just to be the weirdo. <laughs> okay, Amanda, did you have a choice here? I'm going to go with Alaska too. It's actually Indiana. The town was originally huh? called Santa Fe, but when the residents of Santa Fe asked for a post office, they were told that Indiana already had a Santa Fe, so they had to they renamed the entire town Santa Claus. And lo and behold, they, allegedly the town has a Christmas themed 365 days a year now. So, uh, so good job everybody who said Indiana. Let's uh, move on to our our first official segment for the day. We're doing things a little different today since it's our holiday edition. We're going to talk about Christmas and holiday oriented gift giving. I think the original question we posed to ourselves was, what's on your Christmas list for your car or for your favorite drivers around you? Dawn, you want to get us started with that? I do. And, you know, I was looking at mostly things that my car, I could do myself and, you know, kind of a do-it-yourself or DIY. One of the things that I found was a remote starter that you oh, post you know, production that you could install. It's uh, it's called Viper, and, and you can, you know, sim simple starter remotely. It's about 130 bucks. Who knew oh, yeah. that you could do that? I thought that was kind of cool. So your car could get nice and toasty warm when it's going to snow on Christmas this year, right? <laughs> I've heard mixed, mixed reports on whether or not the South is going to get snowed on this Christmas. I know it and keeps you, going back and forth. For, right? And you, you just triggered a bread riot at Kroger. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <What'd you laughs> say? That's right. Milk scenario? and bread are just gonna fly off the shelf. I was saying I believe it would snow. It's been very cold. It's gonna get cold on uh, Christmas yeah. Christmas week. It's yeah. gonna dip down to the twenties. Uh, I mean, it's it's that little snow symbol keeps coming up on the Weather Channel. So that brings me to my other thing, which we in the South don't really need, but that's a good snow tire. I you know I think the car that it's only fair to hoof it right. And snow tires are really important, and they can, you know, best snow tires out there start at various prices, so you just have to just look around. Yeah. Um, there is something that externally you can look at a tie mat tire pressure monitoring system for $55. It's a deal. And it remotely, if you don't have one in your car, now I have one in my Mercedes GL, and, and every time the pressure goes below, you know, it blinks at me and tells me, you know, get me to the nearest pressure, well, I mean, to the nearest uh, air hose, air gauge. Yes, air hose. <laughs> and uh, and quickly, because I'm, 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 uh, I'm off sides there. Um, there's there's some data monitoring things you can do. There's digital wire, wireless cameras, backup cameras, if you don't have one integrated. I think there's just some really cool things you could do some from new bushings. Um, there's a Prothane 12 2002 red total kit for 190 on Amazon. So those those were the things that I was looking to make sure that the, our cars were running well. Who else? No, has uh, no nitrous oxide upgrades for you, Don. Uh, I don't <laughs> think my Mercedes is going to take that this year. <laughs> it really wants a back window, so you know I got to get. <laughs> I had to put yeah. it in there. <laughs> so what, who else has some good gifts for their car? Do, do, been. Oh, I've I've been kind of researching this. I've got uh, ideas that go beyond just the car. I've probably got enough stuff to make a whole episode, but I'll try to keep it short. Um, <laughs> one thing I've got for the garage more than for the car, uh, well, I guess you could say it's for the car in a way, uh, something I actually just got a couple of weeks ago. I have got myself a uh, quick jack lift system. This is yes. what you need if, uh, if neither your garage space nor your budget 
uh, really will facilitate putting in a permanently installed two post or four post lift. This is a thing that's got two little frames that slide under the car and a little motor unit that plugs into them with hydraulic hoses. You can take it anywhere. Well, it's kind of heavy, but you can still take it anywhere and you can lift a car and it comes in various weight capacities and physical sizes. And oh my God, it makes life so much easier for getting under cars, mm -hmm. especially if you've got a nice low car like my Lotus, where if I have to, if I want to create enough space to do work underneath the car, I've got to jack it up in stages with my little floor jack and jack stands. And that got old real fast. This thing will slide into as little as three inches of ground clearance and it will lift up to 5,000 pounds. They also make a 7,000 pound model and they make a smaller one too. Super easy. I can use it with all our cars. In fact, they'll all fit within its weight limit. Uh, if you don't want to spend that much, <clears throat> you can do all kinds of other cool things. Like I was just looking on Summit Racing's website and they have got a gift section that is eye popping. In addition to all the actual car stuff, tools and parts and neat things like that, they have got uh, like toy workbenches for kids that come with little plastic tools and everything. They've got drink dispensers that look like vintage gas pumps. They've got an alarm clock that's got a drag racing Christmas tree on it. The lights count down, and then you hear a, a good nitrous burnout when the thing goes off. <laughs> and you look so excited. I can't stand it. They, they have got cool stuff. And then uh, if you want to move into uh, more experiential things, there are a lot of people, people organizing uh, luxury touring uh, trips out there. Um, oh. they, so what we need to get Ben for Christmas is that alarm clock. It sounds like <laughs> oh, it, it, would, does. it would drive my wife up the wall. I'm sure. <laughs> and we have to get it. <laughs> uh, if you want to do some uh, some interesting travel experiences, this is something to you can give someone to really make their day. They run the gamut from DIY jobs. You can download maps of scenic routes all the way up to multi thousand dollar excursions that include you know luxury accommodations and all meals and a support van and everything uh, wow yeah so there there's lots of things out there there are even some overseas ones yeah. a support van yeah it carries the luggage <laughs> and then it also helps any cars that break down along the way because these kind of trips are popular with people who have you know, like exotic cars or vintage cars things like that oh yeah. i'm glad you asked the I'm glad you asked the question, Don, because I'm thinking a support van. There's like a therapist in it or marriage counselor. <laughs> well, some of the more luxurious ones there might Maybe. be. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Good. Very cool. Thank you, Ben. I want to ask Mario. Uh, Mario, you've got this McLaren flag on your wall. Does that mean a McLaren is on your Christmas list? No, not at all. Christmas no? came early for my car, and it's not a Type R, but it is a Civic. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I had to go get a front control arm, so that cost me you know a little bit but you know moving forward i have christmas plans that go way beyond christmas i'm thinking about starting a new project car so planning that out a uh, little volvo 240 and awesome. i don't know to be the ounce do you do you have the volvo already yeah so i have a i have a 740 actually right now and that was what the current project but then a, a 240 just came in mind yesterday because i was searching through facebook as usual and then I found one and I fell in love with it. <laughs> yeah, it's easy to do. I love yeah. the old 240s. Yeah. Yeah. That's the what reason. Year? That's the reason. What, uh, year are you at? what year is it? I know I have a 92 right now. Uh -huh. So I have a 92 sedan with the turbo B230. And then let me look actually. Yeah, sure. So to hear you talk about your Civic, and I know we're going to talk about this in a minute. In fact, maybe we should just bleed over into our guest segment right now. Um, I thought you had a Type R. No, I have a regular Civic. You have a regular like Civic? 06 Civic EX, 30 miles to the gallon, gets the job done. Excellent. <laughs> All right, cool. So what, what were you, did you find out the year of what you were looking for on your Volvo? Oh, hold up. I'm on, I have to look back at the marketplace because I, I had saved it. Yeah. I think it's an 89. Yeah. Yeah, that's... That's not bad. Actually, no, 92, 92. It is a 92. Okay. 92, 240. Yeah, I love those cars, man. If you get that, I, I'd like to see some pictures of it. Yeah, definitely. So what else is on your Christmas list for this year? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> usually, usually it's to the point right now that like my family and everything kind of either socks. I'll be very content with socks. Like I usually wear like grandpa knee high or not knee high like half high white socks 
that will last me a whole year and like yeah. money. <laughs> money. Yeah. Why don't you just go invest it? <laughs> it's like right. money should last the whole year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So very cool. Uh, I've, I've got lists here for my own Christmas list too, but I wanted to talk to you about, we were going to, Mario, when we first met, we were going to talk about civics in general, uh, yeah. but you, you had some pretty interesting things to say about the civic scene. Can you, can you walk us down that road a little bit? So the only reason I like cars is because all I was around was civics growing up. So like my dad and uncle, they were always working on cars and it just so happened to be that they were big Honda lovers. So I started off with like civics, EG hatches, EG sedans, stuff like that. But it was just all around me and I have a huge respect for them now, even seeing more like more high powered race purpose built ones. But uh, I've had a lot of fun experience, like plenty of stories. Uh, they've kind of just got me conditioned to the car seat. And it's almost like a part of everyday life now. So, but is why Honda? Why Honda and not Toyota, not any, anything else? Because... I think my uncle worked there, so that's how he got into it. I guess when you when you have the the connect with parts and servicing, and you can just bring your car there. Yeah, my dad, I have absolutely no clue. I have absolutely no clue. I'd have to ask him. Like I understand why people like the cars; they're 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 easy to get into. They're easy to tweak mm -hmm. and modify, and to do fun things with. But I often wonder yeah. about brand loyalty. Like I met one guy who had a Honda tattoo, and I'm just thinking that's yeah, that's I think yeah. <laughs> like the cult scene <laughs> i don't understand because you because there's two there's a whole spectrum of honda people you have the ones that i'll go to like AutoZone, get like cheap 50 buck parts cut the exhaust and now it's loud honda boy right there the whole season you like got the new project car got some like jdm valve stems yeah and then you have the full like honda purists that will you know get spoon upgrades um you can upgrades they'll look for those parts on ebay even though like technology is way past some of that technology or some of the parts that they had back then they'll still go to find like og parts original okay. parts and stuff so it's just cool to get to know them and like where their head is at because i guess honda had their hands in so many things in terms of technology and development it's an easy way to get to learn more about your car beyond the fact of these are the parts this is how I put my car together. You know, I can go for more parts, actually get into the science behind everything and why. What have you done to yours? Nothing. Nothing? It's, it's literally just, yep. It's here because I'm a broke college student at the end of the day. <laughs> like, I'm just trying to get by today. I don't even know what, oh, I could relate. you know, my meal is going to be after this. So. Yeah, yeah. No, I, we've so, all been there. Yeah. Yeah. Right before it gets me from A to B. Right before yeah. I went to college, I bought myself <clears throat> a uh, 1983 Accord hatchback. And I think the most crazy modification I did to it was I put a much more high end stereo in it than what it came with. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, I had that thing for eight years. Uh, it, it died with about a quarter million miles on it. And even in totally stock form, it was satisfying to drive. It was a good car. I mean, I loved that thing and I still miss it. Yeah. Yeah. So right now it's sitting on, because this is actually a hand me down from my mom. So hmm. it's sitting at 289K. It's a trooper. Oh, wow. Straight from up, bought wow. new from the lot. So I'm the second owner. And like, it's a trooper. It will be missed, but eventually I plan on going up to like an accord. But once that dies, I'll let it die and go off with a purple heart. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I have a couple questions for you. What does what does car death mean to you? I mean that that different things to different people will kill a car, you know. Oh. I mean a, a head gasket. I imagine that's that's probably beyond yeah. the scope of what you want to fix, right? I actually fixed the head gasket for the seven forty. No way. Yeah. What? So I got it for two hundred dollars because my dad brought it back, and he was like, uh, "The dude who gave it to me just wanted to sidewinder wheels." So then the head gasket was blown and that's where I spent like a few weeks of my summer fixing. Went to the yeah. scene shop and everything. It was a pain in the ass, but yeah, yeah. it got it done. That is uh, serious automotive testosterone. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Ever, the crazy thing is I started it by hand and then I was talking to some people, like people that are older that built cars in the past and that they were like, dude, what are you doing? I was like... <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you got to get into it, right? You just, you got to yeah. get your hands dirty. That's right. I but think that's dead. the best time is yeah. like when you don't know and you're starting and you're just learning. It's cool. Yeah. Oh yeah. I can take everything apart. The hard part is putting it back together again. 
Yeah, <laughs> that's what happened. It, and not like, I took it leftover pieces. Right. Yeah, I, I took it apart. Saying, I wonder if this is important. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Mario. Like, yeah. What do you say? Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So it took me like two days to take, or not even. It took me like a night and a half to take it apart. Literally like two weeks to put it back together. Wow. I couldn't do it, and I didn't like take pictures of it beforehand so oh. i was literally mm. playing legos with it yeah it was Smart. disgusting <laughs> <laughs> i learned so, my which, lesson though takes me back to my original question how much is how much of a repair is too much to to fix too at much. what point do you call a car dead because i have i have killed a car in the past so my first first car we're going to talk about sasha i had a saab 93 oh the suv yeah and i was running late with curfew coming back home in an open 85 coming from like noon uh i just tried to see what it could do because there was a truck coming by me and i think i cracked the oil pan like Ooh. 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 i hit 110 and then i got back it was a trooper up until i got to the exit and then it just shut off oh. so did you it hit never... something how do you crack an oil no pan? it hit nothing just at pressure. all yes oh. just the pressure and then I think that car has probably been started like two or three times to this day. <laughs> that sounds a little dubious to me because uh, the amount yeah. of pressure required, you'd blow all the gaskets out long before you did that. So something yeah. had to have physically damaged it somewhere along the way. No. I think it had low oil as well. I oh, was a 16 year old with uh, zero experience. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no oil will do all kinds of harm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So very cool. What else do we need to talk about uh, regarding Hondas or Civics or the Civic scene, Mario? Uh, I don't know. K Series for the win. K Series. I, for I the have win? to have to <laughs> I have to shout out my dad to that one because <laughs> right now he's trying to build a, like two K Series cars. One's a Civic EK sedan or EK Coupe and a Toyota Corolla. And I'm trying to get him to stop eat like K Series. Or Honda swapping everything and like learn a new motor. Now he's on a BMW, but he just loves it, and I see why. So respect. Well, tell us all real quick what K series means. K series is a series of motors that Honda made throughout the '90s. So K twenty A specifically is like one of the, or K twenty or K twenty four A are like two of the most popular ones that went into more of their high performance sports cars. I thought the B, did they do like a B22 or a B24 for the Honda Preludes coming into the yeah. 90s? And I thought that was, I thought that the B was. B series as well. Yeah. Uh, that, I had a, a Prelude once upon a time and I, I missed that car. That thing was a fantastic oh, yeah. car. But, uh, but for me, car death at that time meant that I got up underneath the car one day and every single system of the car had something wrong with it, right? Like, like it needed a new fuel pump. Uh, the, the radiator hoses were leaking. The oil pan was leaking. The drain plug was no longer actually sticking. Uh, virtually every every operatable system of that car, except for the HVAC, was was starting to be problematic. And I'm like, I just don't want to. I just you know, I don't want to deal with it anymore. So I I got rid of the car and still regret it. Even though I knew that fixing all that stuff was more than I could have handled at the time, I, I completely missed that car. Man. Yeah. So thank you, Mario. Let me ask you our three questions, actually our four questions that we always ask our guests. Oh. What is your dream car, Mario? Dream car, it always changes. It changes yeah. as I grow. Uh, ask me like two years ago, I would have said like Skyline instantly. Skyline or RX-7. Nice. Now a 64 Charger or a Hammer AMG. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ben had a reaction there. Yeah, the Hammer was one of the ones that uh, I fell in love with way back in the 80s, uh, and I still lust for one. Yes. <laughs> All right, very cool. Question number two, where is your next road trip going to be? Next road trip, Utah. Utah? What's in Utah? Utah is my internship. Oh. So mm -hmm. I'll have, I would just Congrats. want to take a road trip out there for that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Which which brings me to the question I wanted to ask you at the beginning of the show. show you said that you're a, a poor college student. May I ask what you're studying? Mechanical engineering. Oh, oh excellent. Okay. Cool. Where? Yeah. At Georgia Tech. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. That's great. Go cool. jackets. Yeah. Utah's got a lot <laughs> of uh, Utah's got a lot of good driving roads, a lot of curves and twists and hills and stuff. That's what I'm excited for. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you want to do with mechanical engineering? Uh so I want to work with cars more or cars or like space systems, stuff like that. Either go fast or make things explode. 
As long as you don't combine the two. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> right. So uh, very cool. Thanks, Mario. Um, no question number three is, what is the most fascinating thing you've seen in someone's house or garage? So one time, I think I was, so I was in a school musical. And then after we had done all the shows, we went to go have like a party at somebody's house or one of the other actors in the show's house. And their dad was a car guy. But nobody, since he grew up in like a house of all girls, nobody was really interested. But uh, in the basement, you eventually ended up in this room where he had like a simulator with like uh, actual steering wheels, like a whole setup to make it look like you were in the car. And I eventually ended up playing and we got to talking and he was like, yeah, I really love cars. And he had pictures of like 930 slant noses, like the Porsche. And I was like, dang. And he's like, yeah, show, come show you this. And he has this secret door that leads to a garage and he had a GT500, like a 67 Shelby nice. in a one-off oh. secret garage. I was like, yeah. uh, interesting. Yes, that is my aspiration to have a house with a <laughs> yeah. secret garage. That's fantastic. <laughs> my last question, <laughs> right, Batcave, right. My, uh, my last question for you today, Mario, is if you could make the clouds rain down anything, what would they rain? This is a tough one. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. I don't know, Chick-fil-A sandwiches. There you go. That's, thing at the That's it. Nice choice. Excellent. Yep. All right. Fun stuff, Mario. Thank you. And uh, um, if I may interrupt, yeah. since we missed the type R thing a little bit, this also ties into our first segment. You, uh, you can get a stick-on type R decal or badge at any auto parts store for less than 10 bucks, and they make a great stocking stuffer. <laughs> <laughs> but ben, do they make my car go faster? Oh, uh, they make it go 10 bucks faster. <laughs> Horsepower. You have Horsepower. to believe. <laughs> it's like Polar That's Express. That's what the season is all about. Exactly. That's right. Okay. <laughs> all right, let's go. Speaking of belief, let's go back to our Christmas lists. Um, Dave, what's on yours? You know, I'm sitting here. I'm, I'm, I'm still, I'm still fixating on a Honda tattoo. That just feels to me like getting a Kenmore <laughs> tattoo. Getting a what tattoo? <laughs> Ken Moore tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most obscure brand you can be like, you know, loyal to, Listerine. In either case, they should pay you to get it. <laughs> that's right. Well, that's the thing. It's like, okay, brand loyalty here, and I get it. I I understand being in love with your car, but but did Honda pay you to do that? Because yeah, Well, that's yeah. like saying you love Kraft macaroni and cheese, so you get a Kraft <laughs> macaroni and cheese box tattoo. Right. I bet yeah. there's one out there somewhere. <laughs> I'm sure. Now I know what I'm doing this weekend. <laughs> so, but, so, no, so answer your question, that, you know, um, what my car is getting for Christmas is a new bumper. Uh, oh, yeah. Cause, yeah, because um, we had talked about this a little bit on an earlier show. I live on the side of a hill, and a um, <coughs> uh, Dodge Ram hauling a trailer with a Bobcat on it broke free, came down the hill, nailed the front of my jeep spun it around and pushed it 30 feet down the road so are you keeping it well i don't know yet because i it's taken them a full month to 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 repair it and so we um uh, i in theory i'm getting it back to tomorrow and that that will you know drive the question of, of whether there is a a new car in in my future or not um depending on how well i, I think it's fixed the uh, so that that may be a secondary car, but right now the cars the 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 two hundred fifty dollar deductible became that car's Christmas present. <laughs> but uh, actually, it, the th fun thing about having a Wrangler though is, you know, once you have bought something for the Wrangler to bolt on, then you know quad you are on Quadratex list for the rest of your life, uh, and you know you you know it's basically it's like getting a Christmas catalog every three weeks <laughs> and, and wow. over, over the last 12 years that jeep uh, you know i've gotten running boards for the jeep i've gotten seat covers for the jeep i've gotten uh yeah just uh, uh, you looking through the quadratech catalog and i'm like i simply cannot live without this new crap macaroni and cheese tattoo yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> <laughs> quadratech interesting i thought it would be weather tech but uh um, oh no. well, they make stuff for everything. Yeah, yeah. Tech makes yeah. I'm kind of tired of the weather tech thing. Really, yeah. 
Why? Yeah, that, Why? They make good stuff, I thought. They do, they do, but it's, you know, it's almost like political commercials. You see them this time of year constantly, you know, yep. your dog bowl, your <laughs> everything is weather tech, your cup holder. I say they don't run on the channels that, that I watch, but uh, I can say that Jen's got several of their accessories in her challenger and she likes them. I think they're, they're extremely well made and, you know, made in America. I like the, that you can custom fit them. I, it's just like the the old Gillette commercials of the of yesteryear, where you constantly saw the razor. That's right, riding the razor, swishing down the <laughs> the slope. You see the weather tag constantly. <laughs> uh, what else, Dave? Anything else on your Christmas list? Well, you know, it, it's. I'm going to come back to to the question you asked about earlier about what constitutes car death. That that um, that's the thing I've been wrestling with with thinking about the Jeep because I don't like to drive. A car that has been wrecked if I don't have faith in it anymore. And so, you know, that for me, car death comes when I no longer have faith that it's that um, it's going to be reliable or if it's going to be fixed. Yeah. One of the, the fun things, though, um, for those of you who don't know, it, we have a, a Facebook page that we coordinate the shows on different topics on and occasionally we just post things. And Ben posted an article earlier um, this week that I thought was hysterical about um, consumers will buy white cars until the heat death of the universe. Yeah. I love that headline. <laughs> I love the headline that the article somewhat did not live up to the headline in terms of humor, but um, the thing that got me is that 38% of people buy white cars and the next closest is 19% buying black. And I have had white cars in the past that I always have sworn I would never own another white car. But as I've been started of like half shopping for, okay, what would I buy if, um, if I decide to replace the Jeep, I'm getting tons and tons and tons of car ads, especially year end car ads, all of them for white cars. And like all the best deals are on white cars. And they're like, you know, <laughs> it's like, I don't want a white car. And they're like, well, that's sorry. That's the only color we have this car in at this price. <laughs> Mm. Now, my 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 father swears by white cars, saying that they're easier to see, <laughs> and I, I I don't agree with him. I love my dad dearly, but I've never thought of. Well, white if you cars. live in Europe or above, you know, a certain latitude, um, white cars are a bad idea because you'll get lost in the snow. Oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah. why. I, and and he grew up in Pittsburgh, so I I really. <laughs> <laughs> get the white car thing so yeah god well, bless you daddy i love he, you but when, yeah. when he was growing up in pittsburgh it wouldn't have been white anyway because it would have been covered with soot yes right. it would have it would have been grayish yes you're right mario you're absolutely uh, right mario what color are your cars mine are gray they're both gray actually they're both gray yeah both different hues my honda Accord is know. black but it uh but i've occasionally thought about wrapping it just to just to do something different but well, Rapping we have only not... black vehicles right now. Say what? We only have black right now. That's yeah. the... Well, the black. paint on this thing needs some serious TLC anyway, because I'm looking at it and it's, it, you know, the front end is pitted and my sister didn't treat it too well before she sold the car to me. So there's paint fade across the roof. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm thinking, I don't really want to fix that. And maybe a, a wrap is an easier way to, to, to you know, mm -hmm. to get it looking yeah. better. <laughs> but... but I just wrap it with Kraft macaroni and cheese. Like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that was what I was yeah, about maybe to you, suggest. Maybe, maybe you can get an endorsement deal out of it. <laughs> so if, hey, if someone pays you to wrap it. Right. If anyone from the Kraft company is listening, uh, let's talk. <laughs> <laughs> I love Sponsorship it. right there. That's Heck it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Pay you in mac and cheese. Amanda, what's on you? Uh, Dave, anything else before I switch to Amanda? No, no, I'm dying to hear what what's on Amanda's list. <laughs> yeah. So my list, I was kind of looking to see what was fun and different and interesting online for car people, you know. And there's all the standard stuff like uh, air fresheners and key rings and cutesy cutesy. Mm -hmm. And then there's... Um, driving gloves and driving shoes and car branded shoe patterns and clothing and stuff like that. But I ran across a website that has little um, valve stem covers that are of the male anatomy, which made me laugh. Wait, wait, oh my. Wait. Ah! 
Wait, oh my. <laughs> I think you got everyone's attention very quickly. There are awesome little penis-shaped Valsum covers that are fluorescent orange and hilarious. If they're orange, that's a sign of a really rare condition. <laughs> yes. You know, I'm going to look this up. Am I going to regret it, Amanda? No, not at all. It's just pretty entertaining. Yeah, good. But all of a sudden, Mickey's small heart grew three sizes. <laughs> <laughs> A matching set of truck nuts too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> those are perfect. Oh. So you know, then there's the fun car stuff like eyelashes and um, mustaches oh. and all of that silliness, and and the little reindeer nose. Oh my gosh, little... I hate those. And the antlers. And the antlers. Yeah. But I, I found a couple of fun things and a couple of entertaining things. So. There are multiple different brands and types of in-car, like that plug up to your cigarette lighter adapter, um, coffee makers. Oh yeah. <laughs> so you could make coffee. And then there's also a toaster oven looking thing that also plugs into your um, that just seems to be inviting all kinds of trouble to me. <laughs> like if, yeah. yes. Unless you have a cup holder or a flat surface somewhere that's accessible, I don't know that I want a toaster oven in the seat next to me. <laughs> There's also yeah. a mini microwave, by the way. I'm, that's a lot going on. I'm dying to see if we get to the mobile you know, front seat walk. <laughs> right. <laughs> I could uh, hibachi in my front seat <laughs> while I'm driving. Well, I do know the origin of this stuff. <laughs> Uh, it, it was actually originally created for uh, use in uh, uh, semi trucks. That makes sense. Oh, yeah. semis. Uh, uh, yeah, they uh, chill back there in the sleeper and cook up a meal while they're there. Right. Yeah. Okay. So even a little sous vide, maybe. Maybe. Hey, yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I realized that semi trucks usually have huge, like, room compartments in the back, mm -hmm. I was amazed. Oh, yeah. I might actually have to get one for a road trip or something. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Exactly. I just don't want to smell the cabs. Oh, oh no. <laughs> no. I'm sure it's not that bad. So oh, I'm sure it's very bad. You can air it out overnight. <laughs> so there's That's all why kinds they have cool... there's a little pop up on the top. Right. There's all kinds of cool tchotchke you can get here. There is so much random stuff that you can buy for your car. But my personal favorites are hmm. car organizer type things, you know, because my car I was wondering. stays a disaster a pretty significant amount of the time because I'll spend so many days just literally driving to work and it's dark outside and driving home from work when it's dark outside and getting up to it again the next day. So I think that personally my car would receive for Christmas car organizer type stuff. So storage bags, trash containers, things like that. But I ran across the best idea ever, which is the French fry holder. It hangs oh. on um, the car door handle or fits in the cup holder and holds your French fries. Nice. And I would That's be really quite happy with that because I'm Wait, always the trying to thing find... For ketchup? I wish. Holy cow. That would be amazing. Like if it had a little <laughs> pocket that you could stick the ketchup in. Yes. But that's the worst part. Well, let's patent this. <laughs> yeah, right? let's this. Hello. Yeah. There's our million yeah. dollar idea. Yeah, the, yeah, the clip on condiment dispenser for the French fry. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Okay, Mario, I have to tell you this. Be engineer to engineer. This is where you make money in engineering. Not this going faster, blowing stuff up. We can up. cat it tonight. Yeah, it, it, it's the ketchup <laughs> caddy. Truly. I, I mean, but seriously, Amanda, you've really hit on something there. Because you love going through, getting those fries nice and hot. And then you're flipping around with the doggone condiments. Yes, it's, you're like balancing them everywhere, trying to find a place that... They won't slide away when you turn corners or fall down and spill. Yes, this idea can fund our next rides. I like Actually, this. Actually, I'm thinking if we can modify it to an onion ring holder and sell it <laughs> outside of varsity <laughs> at 3 o'clock in the morning, you know, we, uh, yeah, we, we, we've paid the rest of Mario's way through school. Truly. That's it. 
right that there. Is, that's it. I could be there every day. <laughs> <laughs> you got your God. I would be so heartbroken to spend all my time with the varsity. Let me just tell you. <laughs> How many times have you been to the varsity in your lives? Oh my gosh. There isn't a number. In my uh, life, I probably only go two times a year, three times a year, and lately mostly because of Amanda. But, uh, <laughs> True. Uh, but I don't, I don't mind the varsity as much as other people seem to, you know, there are people who love it and there are people who are like, yeah. ugh. Yeah. Say what? Yeah. Yeah. I was just saying that because it's not the worst at all. No. It's just, even, even though I live like literally across the street, <laughs> yeah. I've only been there maybe twice, three times. Yeah. I've, I've been there five times in 30 years. I I've, I've probably I've been the there same. five times I, in four months. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you, Amanda. Yeah, well, that, my husband tries to pull. The, says the car wants to go get a frozen O. So, so. Right. Oh, for the you know the original one down on North Avenue. Yeah, probably five and thirty. But I've been to the one at the airport more times than I can remember. Yeah, yeah. Oh. All right. So, Mario, we only go to um, the varsity when we go to Georgia Tech games. Oh, which is, yeah. It's just you can't really tailgate at Georgia Tech, so going no, to the varsity not at all. is so much better. Yeah. So it's but I can say it's it correlates completely with going to a Georgia Tech game. That's the I've been to the varsity varsities. more times than I've been to a Georgia Tech game. <laughs> <I'll be honest. laughs> I, at some point, I just got tired of witnessing defeat, oh. but I still support <laughs> them long and through. That it's was how huge. I felt. That was how I felt about my undergrads. And it's like, what, like the year we lost homecoming to Mount How Holyoke School for the Blind. <laughs> That's too funny. Man. <laughs> mm -mm. We're not going there. <laughs> no, not going to go there. Oh, you know who we haven't? I haven't done my list yet. No, you no. have not. Oh. All right, so let's let's do that, and then we'll wrap out the show. I actually asked my wife what she wanted to do for her car, and she she didn't even hesitate. Her list just rattled off of her tongue. And she says she wants to do a stereo upgrade. She wants to put a new suspension on her car. She wants to get the windows tinted. And if there's time and money left over after that, she wants to put in cool colored LED interior lights and uh, get a new set of seat covers or uh, get them actually reupholstered. Mm -hmm. So um, she drives a 1992 Toyota Tercel, one and only owner, has over 300,000 miles on it. She's rebuilt the engine once. Um, Wow. And she knows this car backwards and forwards. Yeah. It's a tiny little Super. Econo box, but she mm -hmm. drives it. Yeah. And, she uh, sounds like she loves it. Does she still yeah, want to do the uh, R2-D2 wrap on it? I don't know if she wants to do the R2-D2 wrap, but I think she wants to theme the car after R2-D2. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so, yeah, she wants to do something like that. Like, she's adding little blue accents here and there for the R2-D2 theme uh, on an otherwise white car. Go, go figure. Um but so for her Christmas present from me was an actual, she's, she's getting a new stereo for the car. Nice. nice. Oh, so Very nice. nice. Very nice. Yeah. Well, now, okay. When, she, when after we wrap the show, tell her it was all about that, you know, you're getting her Kraft macaroni and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> uh, getting her a case of Kraft macaroni and cheese. That's right. And a car wrap. Well, and, and to, right. As long as we're mentioning companies and doing shameless plugs, we did the Crutchfield thing and found uh, four um, speakers and she sanctioned the whole thing. So she kind of knows, but she doesn't know that it's coming. Um, oh. You know, because she's particular about what goes in her car. So I had to at least involve her in the shopping process of it. Uh, but uh, but so she's getting a, a stereo and, and four speakers, um, which in her car leads to a whole nother sets of projects because we have to redo the rear deck to hold the speakers. And we need to fix the leak in the rear windshield before we can put in the rear deck. And it's like, okay. Oh. This has turned into a major project. In any case, that's what she's getting for Christmas. Um, for me, you know, I don't actually have anything I want to get for my car. My, my Christmas lists are along the lines of, of, you know, can we turn this podcast into a TV show that gets us into a workshop in a garage? <laughs> that would be the best Christmas gift I could ask for at this point. Yeah. Uh, or, or to find people who can help us, you know, make that journey. Uh, otherwise, the only thing that I want in the automotive sense for Christmas is uh, uh, something with a Hemi in it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a new car with a nice, you know, stout Hemi and I'm happy. Um, That's what my husband wants too. Yeah? yeah He's going to get the Durango with the Hemi? Uh, he would if he could. Yeah. He would if he could. It's not in the cards this year. No, no. So, after that, uh, the 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 only other thing I could ask for is, is some sort of a job in the automotive world. 
Oh, yeah. And uh, maybe I should go back to being a parts guy again. I don't know, but uh, but that's it. You know, you know what we should do is do a Christmas list for the podcast itself. I can think of two things. One is to ask our you know it's always a gift when we get a, a new patron via Patreon. It's patreon.com slash the thing about coast. In the in the last couple of months, we had a, a couple gifts that were given to us via Patreon, and that's that's always a, a nice feeling, and uh, we appreciate it. It helps us move the show forward in positive directions whenever that happens so if if our listeners are feeling like you know the christmas spirit is is uh um, upon you the patreon.com slash the thing about cars will find us is that a is that a gratuitous shameless plug should i go back and do it again absolutely Dave? we're proud of you yeah. yes <laughs> see that plug yeah. away we Shameless need sponsors play. yeah <laughs> we do all need the, sponsors yes all the who's down in the thing about cars you know like to eat yes <laughs> Yes. And uh, similarly, you know, ratings, um, ratings and likes on Apple podcasts or wherever people find the thing about cars always helps us gain more visibility. Uh, Spotify. And we really appreciate it when folks do that. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so, you know, in, in, I, I looked up the requirements for getting featured as an Apple podcast, and it turns out we're doing all the right things except for one missing element. And that one missing element is simply getting more people to like us on Apple podcasts or leave us ratings. And if folks do that, then we can get featured on Apple Podcasts, and that's a pretty big deal. So, all right. Well, Mickey, maybe, maybe Santa will make your wish come true. Maybe Santa will make my wish come true. <laughs> um, so, I like Amanda. I'll, I'll wrap the show out on this on this thing. There's plenty of stuff here to talk about here, but I thought about gifts for people who do drive a lot and stuff that they should have in their car. And the two things, I mean, there are a number of things that I that I could talk about, like polarized sunglasses. I thought specifically polarized sunglasses are important for driving because they cut on glare. But uh, the two other things that I thought were useful for any driver would be a dash cam. Yes. And, and a portable jump starter, like those little bricks mm. that you can carry around with you with some, you know, amps in it. And that's it. I, if I could gift that to every driver in the world, I think that would be a good thing to do. But dash cams in particular these days, I think are becoming more and more important. So what do you guys think? No on the dash cams. Yes on the dash cams. I agree yes. completely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I actually I'll be I'll be the dissenter. I have mixed feelings. Really? Yeah. Why? I don't know. I I don't know. I, I there's something about it that makes me feel like I'm inviting problems. Oh. I, I don't know. I I just I I sometimes want to just live in a world where everybody is kind and honest and. I know that world doesn't exist. I was going to say, how's that working out for you? Mm -hmm. No, it's <laughs> not, you know. But a dash cam just makes me feel, I don't know, like I'm looking for trouble. Yeah, it's, you know, it's a CYA maneuver, yeah. if anything, these days. It's, uh, it is. Yeah. Definitely. But, uh, I, I gave in and got one once when Jen and I were uh, driving around one day and we saw a hit and run take place in front of us. And I had the dash cam, but it was still in the box back in the apartment at the time. <laughs> I'm like, man, if I'd had that thing installed, we could have nailed that guy. And, uh, but yeah. Well, you know, you're right. I mean, we were in a vehicle um, on Friday going up the connector. And let me tell you what, we were, we were in the HOV lane. You know, we had lots of people, you know, two people in the car. And this SUV came three lanes over, cut us off so badly that we had to ditch into the side rail almost it would have been a bad accident. I mean, I don't even know if some of us would have survived. It was, mm. it was, it was amazing how I think good driving is also a gift to people. Like yeah. to defensive yeah. Yeah. driving. That's what I was going to say. If I was not such a defensive driver, I don't know that we would have survived. It's this guy and this woman actually just could not, she just kept coming over and wouldn't literally, I think we were like, we were rubbing paint. It was it was sad. Well, I mean, I'm glad that didn't happen. But I like that statement. I like the idea that good driving is a gift for your fellow drivers. That's yeah. that's pretty good. I'll throw in turn signals or a nice stocking stuffer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ma what? Mario's like, yes, thank you. Those come? Yeah, actually, because like, I'm a faithful turn signal user. Like, yeah. I, I don't mind doing it. Even if nobody's in the lane, I'll still do it. Because I've had instances where cops just follow behind me and it's like, they understand that maybe in my area, because I tend to speed a lot around there, then they're like, yeah, so let me be on my best behavior. But please use your turn signals. Are you, Mario, are you saying you have a reputation amongst the local police? Not anymore. <laughs> <my past life. laughs> Fantastic. Well, that's cool. Thank you, you guys. I think that's going to wrap up our episode for the day. Any other parting words for our for our friends? 
God bless us, everyone. <laughs> Use your turn signals. <laughs> Use your turn signals. Drive safe to each other. Uh, Drive happy safely. Holidays. Be kind. Yes, exactly. happy holidays to all of our listeners. And if you have any questions or want to join us for a future episode of The Thing About Cars, uh, find us on Facebook. That's the easiest way to get us these days. It's, it's simply facebook.com slash The Thing About Cars. But, uh, uh, we love you guys and hope you're looking forward to a good Christmas and a happy Hanukkah and whatever else you may choose to celebrate. We will see you in 2021. Take care, everybody. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye. Welcome 2021. Thank you for listening. This has been The Thing About Cars. We'll see you on the road.